Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that mean linked with the summer transfer move to Arsenal. Back in the studio officially now, the World Cup is over. And uh, what a fantastic World Cup it was. And a great game yesterday. France winning it by four goals to two. Um, even though, though there was that controversial penalty moment in the game, which I, I didn't think that was a penalty. Um, I know a lot of people have been really split over it. But I didn't think, I think it was too close. If a penalty's got to be deliberate, I can't see how that was deliberate. Um, but anyway, France went on to win 4-2. The penalty didn't sort of matter fully in the end anyway. Um, and uh, the star of the show was Mbappe. Uh, I think over the tournament, he's been a wonderful, absolutely brilliant player. To think he was nearly a gooner. Arsene Wenger, actually, remember was willing to pay £100 million to get um, Mbappe. And now you see the reason why. He's 19. Could you imagine him at Arsenal, how good he would have been? Um, and probably now the mantle, you've got to say, is the best player in the world, has passed over to Mbappe. And wow, that would have been magnificent. And Mbappe actually came out, didn't he, and said that I nearly signed for Arsenal. I was close to signing for Arsenal, but he decided in the end PSG... And uh, he's probably going to end up at Real Madrid or something like that one day. But what a wonderful player. Just goes to show, if you're willing to pay the money for these type of players, they are worth it. They are worth it. Now, listen, there's other players at that World Cup who were playing in the game yesterday that also have been interested in. Will they follow it up is the question. Benjamin Pavard is one. He had a fantastic World Cup from start to finish. Remember that brilliant goal he scored, I think it was against Argentina. Um, and he was a player that Arsenal were looking at very, very hard just before the World Cup. Now, it looks like we probably missed out on this one. If we, we should have moved before the start of the World Cup. And he was playing in the World Cup at right back. And remember, that's not even his position. He really plays as a centre-back um, for his club, Stuttgart. But at right back, he excelled, scored that great goal, was brilliant, solid throughout and would have been a brilliant signing for Arsenal. Whether they now, after the World Cup's finish, continue to try and see if they can get um, Pavard done, um, that's another matter. He'll be very expensive. His stock has gone right up and the rumours are that he's going to end up at Bayern Munich. So this is the reason why sometimes they say get it done before the World Cup begins because, as I said, Pavard was a player that we were really interested in. But it looks like we're going to probably miss out on that one. Usman Dembele. What is going to happen with Usman Dembele now that the World Cup has finished? He's only played a bit part in the World Cup, which was, you know, kind of surprising. Leading up until the World Cup, he was one of the main men. It was him and Mbappe. They were the two main men um, for France in the World Cup. They sort of, uh, the manager um, sort of, um, Deschamps sort of pushed out Mbappe wide and went with Giroud down the middle. Um, well done to Giroud, by the way, for you know winning a World Cup medal. You wouldn't have thought that. Oh, yeah, that Claude. <laughs> right? Giroud's a World Cup winner. But um, Usman Dembele, what is going to happen with him? Now, we know that Arsenal retain an interest in Usman Dembele. They would love to sign him. And he would be a marquee signing. Forget what you saw at the World Cup. I know he only played a bit part. I know last season he was very disappointing for Barcelona. But these are some of the things that could work in Arsenal's favour. Now, we know that Barcelona are currently chasing Willian. Um, that's the guy that they're trying to bring in from Chelsea. Now, Chelsea have just changed their manager. Willian looks like he'd be up for a move. Now, if that did happen and Willian moved to Barcelona, could that open up the door for Arsenal to move in and get Usman Dembele. And there is a chance. Listen, it all comes down to lots of things falling into place. And then, you know, I know there'll be a lot of people out there saying, well, why would Usman Dembele want to come to, to Arsenal? Maybe it could be like a sort of loan structure deal, like what the plug spoke about the other day, which was similar to what PSG have done with Mbappe, with a thing that where they can buy him afterwards. Maybe it could be something like that. Um, who knows? But Dembele, that would be a great signing. I've heard people saying, well, why would he want to come to Arsenal? Well, you know, he, he used to be a Dortmund player. and We seem to be Dortmund part two at the moment, taking all the Dortmund players. He's very good friends with Aubameyang, very good friends with Socrates, Mkhitaryan. He, he commented the other day 
when Socrates um, played in the friendly um, at the weekend. He made a comment on his Instagram about it. Listen, these are only t totally minor, minor things, but he would be a great, great signing. He'd be so exciting. Arsenal would give him game time week in, week out. Will he get that if he stays at Barcelona? I doubt it. Again, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Usman Dembele now that the World Cup's over. And also now that the World Cup's over, what happens with Steven Nzonzi? I thought yesterday he was brilliant. When he came on, Kante was having a really poor game, which, you know, you don't normally see that by Kante. But Kante picked up a yellow card earlier in the game and that seemed to hinder him. And then um, Deschamps brought on uh, Nzonzi when Croatia were attacking and being brilliant. And Nzonzi just steadied the ship. He was calm, he was good, he was good with the ball, he was solid in front of that back four. I was looking at him, I was like, hey, this guy would be perfect for Arsenal. I know we've got Torreira, but why not Nzonzi as well? Why not Nzonzi as well? Um, you know, we know we heard there's this price of about 35 million euros. However, a lot of people suggesting over in um, Spain that around about £20 million will get it done. He is getting knocking on a bit now, he's 29, but I think he will be an excellent addition. He's played under Unai Emery in the past. Will Arsenal follow this one up? Unai Emery seemed to suggest that he's happy with just Torreira, and maybe he won't, but again, the transfer market doesn't close until the second week in August. Could this be uh, um, a person that Arsenal move in for in Zonzi? He wants to leave, remember, as well. Let's see what happens with that one. What about Rakitic? You know, I saw him playing again yesterday. Another brilliant performance. He's been completely consistent throughout the World Cup. Again, for me, another guy would represent a quality signing by Arsenal. Again, his age is going against him. You know, he's starting to get into the 30-year-old mark. He's not playing week in, week out for Barcelona. Maybe if a club like Arsenal came in, this is just maybe, this is just me suggesting this one, maybe he might be up for a move. Somebody like Rakitic in our midfield would be brilliant. We, the, the creativity in his passing range that he brings definitely be an upgrade for me on a player like Xhaka. Um, but what about a Rakitic, you know? Just putting that one out there. And also the other player from Croatia who was playing yesterday that Arsenal been linked heavily with, Ante Rebic. Now, again quality winger, can play anywhere really in that midfield, um, playing, uh, he's, a, he's an Eintracht Frankfurt player, uh, listen, they've already said they'll be up for selling him, you know, they'll be willing to cash in on Rebic, Rebic has played brilliantly throughout the World Cup, really was one of Croatia's best performers and really consistent, should this be a player that Arsenal make a move for now that the World Cup has finished, we've, as I said, we've heard the rumours, We've heard that Arsenal are interested in him. Should they make a move for him? We'll have to wait and see what happens now that the World Cup has finished. So now that the World Cup's done, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Arsenal. They have said, Unai Emery's made it clear that if that one name comes up, that it's like, nah, we can't not move for this, that he'll move in and get them. We'll have to wait and see if he does that. Um, but... Uh, Great World Cup, by the way. Russia was brilliant. Um, I was privileged to be out there for literally the whole of it. And I've got to say, um, I'm already missing it. It was fantastic. Uh, let's get into a couple of your comments. Uh, Yaki Irigenero Zorro says, why don't we grab Kinsley Coman? He's a brilliant winger for Bayern Munich. Wasn't selected for the French national squad, but he, would definitely be, he should definitely be scouted while he's young and still under the radar. I don't think Bayern Munich are going to want to sell, sell Kingsley Coleman, and they, you know what he said is true. He weren't even in the French team. They didn't have <coughs> Kingsley Coleman. They didn't even bring Lacazette. They didn't even bring Adrian Rabiot. I mean, what a team they've got. They had Lamar. He didn't even play. He's just sitting on the bench. Mendy. I mean, what an incredible team that French. They, you know, their second team would probably win the World Cup. Um, Alex says uh, we need either Lozano, Pavon, or Dembele. First choice for him would be Lozano. He's super hardworking, would be a class addition to the team. Also, he says, why TF Andre Gomez? If we're going to get a Barca reject, we should get Yeri Mina. You know, um, that Yeri Mina, he was brilliant for Colombia um, in the World Cup. He's still young, and from what I've seen of him, he fit perfectly um, 
in the Premier League and it looks like Barca would be willing to sell him. So, you know, I agree with him. Yerry Mina, Lozano I like as well. Lozano, the Mexican, was, was uh, great in the World Cup. Um, Arsenal been linked with Lozano, but I don't think that's going to happen somehow. Um, Gagago King says we should go for Douglas Costa instead of Dybala. He'll be more cheaper and he's more skillful. And with Ronaldo, he might have limited playing time. That's a good shout. Douglas Costa, I thought again in the World Cup when he came on for Brazil, he, he, he should have started for Brazil already. He, he was dynamic. He, again, would be a great player. I mean, I've seen him play against Arsenal several times and he's tore us apart. He would be a great signing. Again, that could be one of those signings that maybe Uno Emery's looking at and saying, look, if he becomes available because of the whole Ronaldo thing, maybe. I don't know. Let's wait and see. Um, Ballerina Samuel says, Arsenal still need a defender. I promise you that Socrates will disappoint you all next season. Get Sionko or someone really good. Socrates is far from what we need to stabilise our defence. Mm. Um, Kunte says, uh, Arsenal needs to go for Ante Rebic. Exciting winger with blazing pace and he can do a support, a striker role too. We just spoke about him from Croatia. A final one for today. Hussam says, Arsenal needs a centre-back, so why not buy Bonucci? He's uh, experienced and good, only costs £30 million and I think he's still a bargain for his quality. Uh, he said, like, if you agree. Listen, um, Bonucci is a top, top quality um, defender, but he costs a lot of money and he's quite old now. I mean, maybe, you know, Arsenal really bought in quite a lot of 30-year-olds and players, you know, going on 30. Maybe in that position, they need to get a younger player that's going to develop into that solid centre-back um, that can be in the Arsenal team for years. Um, let's wait. Maybe that's Rob Holding. Maybe that's Callum Chambers. They've got big seasons ahead of them. Listen, thanks for watching the show today. We will be back tomorrow. We're back here in the studio here with AFTV Transfer Daily. It's all Arsenal now. Don't forget, we're going to be going out to Singapore for the um, friendlies with Arsenal. We're heading out to uh, Dublin. Looking forward to that one in Ireland. We're going to Sweden. We'll be there all the step of the way, leading right up to when Arsenal start the new season. First game against Manchester City. The Unai Emery revolution begins.